Hey mom, so welcome back to the channel. So guess what we're talking about today? Mama burnout from, what is this, nine months of lockdown, working from home, doing school from home, having people underfoot all the time with no space to take for yourself. Take a big breath when we say that. Oh, I feel like this has been such a year of anxiety for all parents. Um, even if it's going pretty well for you, there's still been a lot of reasons to feel really stressed out. And something I have heard from moms and dads continually this year is just the sheer level of burnout we're all experiencing. I know I feel it too, <laughs> you know? I try to work from home, I try to do homeschool from home because we decided to just pull them out this year and do full homeschool for kindergarten. Um, trying to keep the house together, keep all the holidays magical and special and fun, um, deal with a very nauseous pregnancy. You know, I've been sick this whole pregnancy. <laughs> I'm at, where am I at now? 28, yeah, 28 weeks. Still totally nauseous and sick. So it's just been a lot on top of just general anxiety and worry about, oh, is it plague times? So I thought I would share things that I am doing practically to try and not just burn my poor brain out, right? I think that I can tell I'm having a burnout day when I am short-tempered, I'm grumpy, um, and I just lack focus for anything. And that can be focus for doing house stuff, that can be focus for mom duty, that can be focus for work. Um, I really feel those. And I, what I've had to start doing is I've had to recognize that that's a burnout day and I need to take a step back and do some steps to make myself feel a little bit less crazy and just on the edge of breaking and going, I can't do this, what's going on? It's too many things, you know? I had one of those the other day and I totally recognized it. And you know, I explained to my son, oh, you know, mommy's not feeling well today. We're gonna try to have a take it easy day. Um, so first thing I do is I eliminate cooking complex meals. So I haven't been cooking as much as I normally do this year because I've just been so sick so sick that I'm gonna have to hold down food, I'm gonna have to hold down water. Um, but I still try to make us meals that are healthy and you know, sit us down for family dinner. And you know, I make breakfast, lunch, dinner, plus snacks and tea time and dessert and all that. So it's just a lot to cook. So on burnout days, I just eliminate the whole, I've got to cook thing. Um, I will make grilled cheese on the stove, I'll make sandwiches. I'll do, I, this is the first year in years I've bought canned soup. <laughs> you know, I will purposely make a big thing of spaghetti and leave it in the fridge to heat up on burnout days because I know, I know that I'm going to have these days during all of this insanity. Um, prepared food, which is so unlike me. If you know me, you know I love to make everything from scratch. I used to make Abraham's baby food from scratch, which he hated. He wanted the premium baby food. <laughs> um, so just eliminating that pressure point of cooking stuff because for me that can be something that you know it's going to take an hour prep it cook it clean it up um a second thing speaking of cleanup that i have been doing is i have bought paper plates and disposable utensils and sometimes when i am just feeling overloaded with everything i have to do i just i just use paper plates and disposable utensils um and it's really helped me not have to feel even more burnt out because I know I just don't feel up to doing all the dishes, right? On top of everything else. And I know that it's gonna be one of my trigger points for anxiety if my sink is full of dirty dishes, right? I don't like it, I don't, I, you know, I want, I want the space to be clean. So I just give myself permission to have times where all I'm doing is I'm cleaning, you know, spatulas and pans and things that I'm cooking something in, but I'm eating off of paper plates. and. I feel schleppy doing it, but it's so much better than feeling anxious because there are dishes to be done or just exhausted having to stay up and clean more um, because it's little things, right? Like I can't change anything big in my life right now that are causing all these stresses, right? I can't make Corona go away. I can't make schooling easier. I can't make work deadlines poof and disappear, right? Um, so part of the things that I've been doing are small shifts, like recognizing when I'm having burnout and knowing that there are small things I can do. Um, for work, and this doesn't apply for everybody, but if you're working from home, sometimes you have a little bit more flexibility in, you know, what time of day or when you're having to tweak things for work. 
Um, and if I'm really f feeling burnt out and not creative, I will stop what I'm doing. I will either do something around the house, I will do something with Abraham to play or for school, or I'll just sit and I'll watch a little bit of Netflix and I will come back to my work project in a couple hours with a fresh set of eyes and more relaxation, you know, less anxiety, less pressure, and I'll actually get the task done. And sometimes, honestly, I have to put it off a day, right? Like, I've missed some deadlines during corona lockdown because I just have not been able to keep all the balls up in the air, right? You know, you keep the glass balls up because you don't want them to break, but sometimes you drop some of the plastic ones that have a little bit more flexibility. Um, and I've tried to be really forgiving on just missing some deadlines, hopefully not by too much, but by a little bit because that's just what I've been able to cope with. Um, so definitely coming back, and you might, you might not be able to put it off by a whole day, but you might be able to put it off by a couple hours. And by doing that, I actually do a good job then on the project. I finish it, it's you know the best I can make it, instead of half-heartedly doing it and having it take three times as long because I'm so burnt out mentally, right? That can actually make your work way better and it can make you even more productive. So it can be a really good thing. I wish more bo bosses were more flexible about that and realizing you get a better product from people if you just give them the space during this time where we're all hyper burned out, right? So then it comes to, so I'm, I'm doing my work stuff, I'm doing my home stuff, then it comes to parenting things because there are days when parenting is just really hard on a good day. And sometimes during lockdown, it just feels like you're losing your mind, right? <laughs> because it, it's a lot of things that we parents have been asked to do this year, to cope with emotionally, mentally, and physically. Um, and I think that it's totally okay to step back, pat yourself on the back and go, woohoo, you're doing it, you're making it through, but that this is a lot to ask of a person. Um, so on kid days, when I'm exhausted, and I've had some of these days with this pregnancy where I've just been so sick, I've been so dehydrated or just underfed because I've been so sick, I've been throwing up so much that, you know, I still have to play with Abraham, I still have to be a present mama, right? I don't get that day off. But what I will do is I will literally, you know, I'll lay on the sofa and I will have him bring me things to play with. So I will play a game with him that way. And we'll build big towers or we'll build a machine or a robot with simple pieces, you know, a little simple robot, um, on the sofa together where I can lay and I can still be resting, but I can be engaging and having one-on-one -on -one time. Um, you've all seen the videos where this year I finally set up like a craft homeschool table in the corner of our kind of living room, kitchen space, because it's all one room. Um, and there we can sit and we do Play-Doh. I make him Play-Doh monster food because he loves that, you know, or we'll do some crafts. We'll do some right now Christmas um, crafts and artwork and everything. And it's a way for me to still take a breather and not be, you know, going out on a scavenger hunt, jumping all over the place, driving somewhere to take him for a hike, feeling like I have to go, 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 even though I'm not really present because I'm feeling burnt out, right? So by taking a step back from parenting duties, and I know that we don't get to just stop doing the parenting duties. Totally get that. Trust me, I'm there with you. We've got to slow it down, be a little more mellow, and actually i think our kids benefit from that because they see that a we're human we experience exhaustion and burnout too and big emotions and b we're more present that way you aren't really present when you're kind of going through the motions because you feel like i've got to be a super parent or i'm bad right you can just you can just be present you can do little things uh we'll watch a cartoon together i will get us a little plate of snacks i'll make us some hot cocoa or some tea time and we'll just sit together and cuddle and it's been a big learning curve for my son because, you know, I haven't been very well this pregnancy. Um, and then before that, I had the killer flu last November, December, so it's been more than a year now. So my son's really gotten to see me be very sick, like immobilized sick. And we've really been able to talk it through to where it's not a source of anxiety for him, because I always worry about that, you know, when he sees his mama not feeling super great but of empathy, where he's learned that, oh, you know, mamas need to drink water, they need to rest and take, you know, get good sleep too, and it's really let him humanize me instead of me just being a provider of things, entertainment, you know, press the button and go, and we've really talked about it this year. It's opened up a dialogue between me and my son where I really talk about, you know, you have to have patience, 
You have to have understanding for people. You have to have kindness. And he brings this up now. He talks about how a family helps each other and a family is understanding. And I think it's really helped him grow emotionally and also then internalize it for his own feelings. You know, when he needs this kind of extra help, that it's not just him, it's everybody. And it's given him a lot of empathy and I think understanding for everyone. My camera decided that its card was full. <laughs> but yeah, so much of this is about recognizing when you've reached burnout and what pressure points in your life you actually have control over to kind of lessen that burnout and just take a pause. Um, you know, I would love to say go take a bubble bath, listen to a podcast, watch a great movie curled up in bed by yourself, but I realize that for a lot of us, that's just not an option right now, right? We don't have any extra childcare. Um, I know my son has been extra needy during lockdown because, you know, he feels the anxiety too of this big shift in what his schedule is. Um, so it's kind of making the best of our situations and not trying to go back to our old schedules or trying to do impossible tasks, right? It's just accepting that we're all human and we all need to give ourselves a little bit of lead way, a little bit of help so that we don't feel so burnt out, right? I'm, I'm there with you. I totally feel it with you. Um, I think that it's unreasonable to be hard on yourself for feeling burnt out right now because that's okay. I think we all are. Some of us are just pretending that we are, right? It's okay to admit, whew, I could use a breather. And that can mean, you know, pushing bedtime back by half an hour and getting your kids in bed a little bit earlier so that you can sit and read a book or watch a TV show and just decompress. And I think that that's one of the most important things I've been learning to do during lockdown is to give myself time to just decompress. And I know that sounds so easy and simple, right? But it's so vital to just give your brain time to be its little vegetable self and marinate, you know, its relaxation juices. And to just give your body time to whew, not be in constant go mode because that's not good for our health, right? We don't want long-term health effects from the stress of this crazy year, which is, it's almost done. Woo! I know, I know that magically on the 1st of January, everything will not be peaches and cream for everybody, but it's just, you know, I feel like we all deserve one of those cool little sheets of paper with our name and a gold sticker that says, you made it, you graduated 2020, because <laughs> this has been one of those years that is just like, it's gonna go down on the record books as like, you know, I was trying to make a symbol for a lighter. You can tell I use lighter slob. <laughs> light, light in the air on fire. I was watching the end of, um, I think it's on HBO, comedian that does like a weekly newsy kind of show. And he did a little segment, I was just watching it on YouTube, where, you know, the numbers 2020 are in the rocks and he just blows it up and walks away slowly as the explosion happens behind him. And I feel like that's all we all, how we all feel about 2020. It's just like, letting up fire, new year, we're ready. Because <laughs> this Christmas is going to be hard on all of us. And I think that it's okay to say that. You know, it's going to be hard on us, our partners, on our kids and on our extended family. And that's okay. It just means next Christmas is going to be one heck of a party because we're all going to be like, yeah, we made it through. Let's go lick all the stuff. We're going to just sneeze on people. <laughs> you know, our relatives, I don't mean strangers, don't do that. <laughs> next Christmas, that's what it's going to be all about. It's like, yeah, here, I'm just going to lick the refrigerator handle. That's been my metaphor for the whole year. It's like, we all just want to get back to licking random things in public, you know, like maybe a box of Cheerios or something. I will say, I don't go out licking strange things. My son likes to just touch things and lick them out in public and oh my god, this year trying to teach him that that is, that's not a good idea, sweetie, um, has been, it's been a struggle. It's been a learning experience. <laughs> He's probably all burnt out too from being told, don't touch that, don't do that, don't touch your face. It's a crazy time. It is. But I want to come on here and say you are not alone if you are feeling the burnt out, burnout. Um, there are totally ways to make it a little bit better. And also just go easier on ourselves, right? We don't have to pretend everything's golden and shiny and fabulous. A lot of the vloggers and grammars that I follow, that I love following this year, I've had a hard time watching because it's just like everything's peachy dory with them. They don't really talk about any of the stress or the negative and it's just like, life's just normal except we're at home. And I'm like, no, let's talk, let's be honest with each other. This is hard, this has been a slog. Even, you know, 
and during good times, this has been a slog of a year, and that's okay to say. I'm grateful for so many good things that have happened this year, but I'm also totally okay with saying like, whew, this has been a tough one. Okay, biscuits, I'm gonna see you in the next video. Oh, if you want to read something spicy, delicious, lickable, and very relaxing, you can go to my Instagram page or write it down to the description box. Boop, 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 boop. Links to all of my novels and holiday novellas full of steamy hot fellers that will love you. Oh yes, and roman romance books by R.M. Kelly. <laughs> okay, biscuits, I love you all. I hope you are coping, not burning out too much, and getting ready to steal all the candy from your kid's stockings. Seems reasonable to me. See you in the next video.